Fatime Anvari, a third grade school teacher in Chelsea, Quebec, was removed from her position as a result of wearing a hijab. This goes against the secular law, Law 21 in Quebec, where those in government roles cannot wear any religious symbols. This ranges from hijab, niqab, or akiba. Honestly, at that second, it was just, just shock. It was very hard to process. Kids were so confused. They saw me in the hallway and they asked me why I cannot be their teacher anymore. A group established to fight Law 21 hosted a picket in support of Fatime and to oppose Law 21. We are moving backward step after step after step by a government that is just trying to gain votes and gain popular support by passing such a law. Uh, this demonstration is today to support Ms. Anvari, who lost her job and is in a very, uh, was put in a very difficult situation. But also we're here to show our determination that we're going to continue fighting against uh, Law 21 till it's repealed. We're not going to stop because of uh, the government's insistence that this is a balanced law or this is a fair law, because we know very well that it is not, and no matter how many times they're going to say that, it will not make it a fair and balanced law. Politicians, the, the, the prime minister of Quebec, the, 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 the ministers, should really try to know better the diversity in this society that they are governing. They should try to spend time in a home where somebody wears a religious symbol so that they would understand what that means and why people do this. It's not simply uh, a symbol that somebody can wear or not wear. It's a religious conviction. It's a conviction. And they're asking people to change their conviction to be able to earn their living. And this is not fair and not just. Ihab Lutoyif, founder of Non Alain Loi 21, joins us. So can you tell me a little bit about the event uh, hosted by Non à la Loi 21 yesterday? Um, we uh, found that it's very important that we have an event here in Montreal uh, regarding what happened to the teacher in Chelsea, Quebec. Uh, we know that they had an event over there in Chelsea in support of her uh, the day before yesterday. Um, and we wanted to show that uh, we in Montreal uh, our movement is still alive and our opposition to, to Bill 21 is still there. In addition to supporting uh, the teacher herself and supporting the community that felt very strongly, the very diverse community, I should say, that felt very strongly uh, in, in supporting her. We also wanted to respond to the, um, uh, the, the lots of talk about that the movement uh, now has a face and uh, that uh, is just because there is someone in particular uh, that is identifiable, that is being uh, uh, heard by the law, that now people are, are talking. And they uh, wanted to refute that because uh, even though the, the movement uh, or the, the cause did not have a one particular face, uh, but actually it had hundreds, if not thousands, of, of, of victims before that. And we wanted to make that very clear. Uh, there were victims who, uh, who couldn't get a job. There were victims who could not get a promotion. There were victims who had to choose between what they believe and their livelihood. And there were victims who had to leave the province. I mean, there were so many victims uh, of this law, and uh, it's continuing as we, as we speak. Uh, so the biggest victim of all, really, was uh, our values of human rights and, 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 and equality and rights in general that were sacrificed to pass this, uh, this law. So um, we found it very important for us to speak up uh, uh, this, at this time. Why do you think not many people um, really recognize that it's it's not just Fatima who's who's um, facing the complications of uh, Law Twenty One at this point? Uh, yes, I think that it is it is exactly that people uh, if don't if they don't have um, I mean some of us can can um, evaluate uh, the situation based on. Uh, um, uh, general uh, rights and and uh, statistics and stuff like that, but most people most people want to see uh, a specific case, and that's why uh, this this all all came up. Uh, but uh, it doesn't it doesn't reduce in any way the the severity of the damage that has been happening for for the last uh, uh, two and a half years now. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this might? be a turning point in the fight against Law 21? I'm not a strong believer of a one particular turning point, but I think I do believe that it does help increase the, 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 the push against it. Uh, it did force 
some politicians who had chosen to be silent for a long time to take a position. And, um, and uh, it did uh, create a much louder outcry than we have heard for a long period of time uh, about this. Even, even at the time when the court cases were being heard, uh, we did not see this much coverage that we saw uh, yesterday. And I have to say that uh, um, yesterday there was uh, barely any media outlet uh, from the mainstream media that didn't cover uh, the, the event we had here in Montreal, although it was announced uh, less than 24 hours before, sorry, less than 48 hours before before it happened. So uh, yes, there was, there, there is a, um, it is a turning point. I wouldn't say 180 degree turning, but it it, it, it is an important uh, landmark in this struggle. Mm -hmm. um, so yesterday I saw that uh, Brampton and Toronto, um, their city council voted to support again, uh, support the fight against Law 21 uh, by providing $100,000 um, essentially towards this fight. Um, do you have any thoughts on this you want to share? Um, I, I do want to share something that uh, I, I did say yesterday when I spoke at, uh, at, the, at the action, uh, which is that it is time first for us to stop looking at any voice that speaks against what's happening in Quebec through Bill 21 or Law 21 as Quebec bashing. And that is my, <clears throat> my, my first response to, uh, to, to such support that's coming from municipalities outside of, of Quebec. Uh, I hope that uh, the Quebec population would be able to see this as uh, something that is for human rights, not against this province. It is not a, uh, something that is that denotes that people don't like Quebec or are waiting for any mistake Quebec to make. It is something to say that this mistake is big, is huge. Uh, to, to push so many uh, entities to uh, take positions that, are, I mean, a, a, a citizen of, of Brampton can say, well, I don't pay my taxes to Brampton to support a law case in Quebec. It shows how much belief the city council in, in, a, in, a, in a city like Brampton believes that this is that something is wrong here, and that they have to stand against it. Plus, uh, I think Quebec has to realize that this doesn't only tarnish Quebec; it tarnishes all of Canada. And how can a Canadian politician stand on the world stage and condemn the violations of human rights in China or in Saudi Arabia or in Iran or wherever wherever it is, uh, while they have such a discriminatory law on their own soil, on their own turf? Uh, so. Um, uh, let's please look at things in a in a logical and objective manner, not just be defensive for for uh, for no reason. Mm -hmm. um, one of the last times we spoke earlier this year uh, was when the justice was making a decision on um, on Law Twenty One. Um, I guess I want to ask, what is the at, at what stage are we in the legal process? Is there still, you know? It, is this process still in the courts? Um, you know, what does this look like? Yes, yes, the process is, is still in the courts. There is still one level of Quebec courts that it has to uh, that has to go through. And uh, as as I believe I had said before, no matter who wins in this level, uh, the, the, the 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 side that loses will take it to the Supreme Court. And from my own analysis. Uh, not claiming to be a legal expert in any way, but I think that this is something that only the Supreme Court of Canada can uh, uh, can rule in. But I hope that also, as we move forward in this struggle, that we do realize that there is the, a flaw in the Canadian Constitution, which is the notwithstanding clause, and that maybe is a good chance for us to rid ourselves as a country from such a flaw. Uh, that would that allows different uh, levels of of, uh, of 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 rights in different places in the same country. Mm -hmm. um, if it does, uh, I mean, when it does go to the Supreme Court of Canada, can we expect this process to take um, much longer? Um, here is where I'm going to say I really I really don't know. Uh, I don't know what uh, what the, the the rules and regulations. Uh, I guess it's also about the backlog uh, in, in different court levels. 
so I, I don't know, but uh, I believe uh, there is nothing going to... I mean, the, Quebec, the next Quebec elections are surely going to take place before the, the Supreme Court hears this, uh, hears this case. And, um, you know, I know this is a bit in the future, but uh, do you have any uh, thoughts on how the Quebec, de- Quebec elections um, can change things if the, the CAC doesn't win again? Um, if the CAC doesn't win, there, and if we have a majority government uh, <clears throat> by the Liberals, or if the majority is constituted by the Liberals and so with, with support from uh, the, the Quebec Solidaire, uh, there is a good chance that this law will fall. Let's remember that the notwithstanding clause itself needs to be renewed. So just by not renewing the notwithstanding clause uh, five years from the day it was passed, then there will be a uh, the, the, this law will automatically be challenged and it will uh, it, it will collapse. So, um, but the problem is if the CAC wins another mandate, what will happen then? And this is very concerning. Okay. Um- if you're able to, could you explain a little bit about the uh, the notwithstanding clause in terms of having to renew it? The notwithstanding clause basically is a clause in the in the Charter of Human Rights, uh, the Canadian Charter of Human Rights, that allows any province to shield itself from certain items in the in the Charter of Human Rights uh, by a simple majority vote in the provincial leg- legislature. So that happened to be able to pass this bill because it, 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 it directly violates items about uh, religious practice and religious freedom in the Canadian Charter. So the CAC, while passing the law, also had to pass a notwithstanding uh, 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 statement uh, by the, 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 the provincial uh, legislature in Quebec saying that let's call it for, for, for simple layman's terms, putting on hold the ability to challenge this law using the Canadian Charter for five years. So that is what the notwithstanding clause allows. After five years, if, if that notwithstanding clause is not renewed, i.e. revoted and passed, then the law becomes unconstitutional and false. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I mean, I, I know we've also chatted a little bit about this before. Um, essentially, the federal government, they can intervene, but they won't. Um, Justin Trudeau said he wouldn't step in to avoid triggering um, jurisdictional a jurisdictional fight with, uh, with Quebec. Um, do you have any specific thoughts on this you'd like to share? Uh, the, the, um, jumping into the... The, the case by the federal government, I think it's more of a moral responsibility than anything else. Uh, I think that uh, I, I don't want to give the prime minister a way out, but he already stated that he is against that law and he does not agree with that law. Um, I don't know. Again, I always shy away from giving legal uh, insights. I don't know how much value in front of the court does the government of Canada having an intervening state uh, have as, as, as a weight in the, in the final decision. Um, but it does strengthen the case in a way because a, a strong entity that has money and that has resources would be arguing for uh, the, the, or against the law, which is, which is legally a strong point anyway. But the moral position is also very important. It has to be unequivocal that we are against this law and we're ready to do whatever we can to to fight uh, against it. And if it is um, in respect of the Canadian uh, system to let Quebec pass any law uh, it, 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 it wants to, then it also is within the Canadian system for any entity to go to the court for something that it doesn't believe in. So we can't we can't pick and choose. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Um, lastly, I just want to ask, uh, what are the next steps uh, for Not à la Loi 21? Well, I think our, our challenge continues to be reaching out to our uh, compatriots in Quebec. I think that the fact, uh, as we have been saying from the beginning, that this law has uh, considerable support among the Quebec population 
is due to ignorance and due to fear. And this is our main, our main battle. It's a very difficult battle because a lot of the Francophone media are uh, not covering uh, what we say uh, enough. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, and thus the message doesn't reach those who need to, read, to, to, to hear the message. Um, and uh, this is our, our biggest challenge. So this is what we're always trying to do with the limited resources that, uh, that we have, which is also something that deeper pockets like the federal government can help in.